Thanks for tuning in to WVUA 23 Sports. I'm Brandon Cameraman, and I'm here with the new baseball coach, Greg Goff. And it's been now five days, coach, since you've been in Crimson Red. I will admit, when you first started, you seemed a little bit on cloud nine, excited at the introductory press conference. How does it feel now five days into the job? It feels great, Brandon. I tell you, it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, the transition's been wonderful. The people here are just phenomenal. They have welcomed myself and our family in. To Tuscaloosa. They have been beyond helpful to help us get acclimated and uh, just really thankful. But yeah, we're still rolling 100%. Have you had a minute to breathe? Not much. Uh, you know, late at night, early mornings, you know, we want to make sure we get everything covered and, uh, you know, it just takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so, uh, you know, right now we just, you know, trying to burn as many hours as we can in a day. And when you take over a new program, what is your initial priority? I mean, what's the first thing you want to get started on? Well, the first thing was just our players, you know, reaching out to our players, trying to meet with some of those guys, uh, introduce ourselves as the new coach to them and our recruits. Those are the ones that are so important for us, those relationships that uh, Coach Gaspar and them have created. And we just want to continue to let those grow and let them know uh, that we're here now. We want to continue to build from what Coach Gaspar and our staff did. When we talked to Bill Battle at the introductory press conference, uh, he, he mentioned a lot of things he really liked about you when he, he was in the interview process, but one thing he talked about was your ability to quickly have success. Um, you, obviously, you did that at Campbell, you did that at Louisiana Tech. I'll ask you, what's the secret? How do you so quickly turn a program around in just a couple of years? Well, it just takes, it takes surrounding yourself with good people, uh, Brandon. You gotta have quality assistant coaches, you gotta have quality um, guys that can go out and find good players and that's the deal with us you know we're, we're going to hit the ground running uh, we've got to find really good players that can compete in the SEC and that's what we've done at the other places we went out and we found players that could fit into our you know offense and found pitchers that can pitch in our pitching system and, and you know help them develop and once they get here and once you develop and you get a chance to win and so far you know we've been real successful in turning those programs around by going in there and trying to treat people the right way ask our players to have a high standard, uh, be highly motivated and be passionate about what they do and, and come in there every day and have a, have a good day's work and hopefully we, you know, we can do that now. One of the things people will question is, you know, you're coming from Louisiana Tech, which maybe doesn't have the same competition that Alabama has. I mean, some would argue the SEC is the best conference in sure. baseball. Are you prepared for the level of competition? Do you see that as a challenge moving forward with the Crimson Tide? Well, I, I do. I feel like, um, you know, I feel very good about our system and what we do and how we attack things. Um, you know, we're going to put together a really good staff and, and come here and expect to win. Um, and I think, you know, we went to Arkansas this past year at Louisiana Tech and beat those guys. Um, you know, we went to LSU and had a good game with them. And then we played Mississippi State over in the regional. So I'm very familiar with the SEC and some of, those, some of the top teams uh, with Mississippi State and LSU in the league. So. Um, I think we can, uh, you know, come here and put our stamp on the program and, and win this league. Within the league, and I'm sure you've gotten this quite a bit, the scholarship issue is sure. that the other programs that have a lottery have an extra scholarship, an academic scholarship they can offer that Alabama, Auburn just don't have. Did you discuss that with Bill Battle in the interview process? Did that come up? He just asked me my thoughts, and my thoughts is real plain. You know, there's no disadvantage here. Um, you know, every program I've ever been to has had some limitations. And, uh, you know, we call them challenges, you know. And so we, we just go in and we, we're going to make the best situation possible here. I think if you get caught up in some things that maybe you don't have or uh, maybe the weather or whatever it might be, things that you can't control, then you, you kind of lose sight of what's really important. We're going to hit the ground running. We believe the University of Alabama is a great fit for student athletes. Uh, this great facility that you see here now, Tuscaloosa and the fan base that we have here, why would you not want to come play baseball at the University of Alabama? And you talked about winning the state. Um, obviously, you have a relatively new coach at Auburn, but you got good programs in this state besides the two SEC schools. Obviously, Alabama State, South Alabama, they've had success. Um, how do you win the state? How do you compete with, with the other programs that have had recent success? Well, you know, the state of Alabama has some great coaches in it uh, from all over the state. I know a lot of them have, have always kind of known them through my years of coaching and always respected them. So it's going to take a lot of hard work uh, for our staff to come in here and get the respect that we need to because there's some great options in the state of Alabama and surrounding states. So, you know, we've got to come in here and just uh, win those relationships over and, and bring kids into this uh, facility and show them, you know, what the commitment is that our administration has made. This is unbelievable what they have done. Uh, so, you know, University of Alabama sells itself. 
But now with the facilities and the league and things like that, I think we're a great option. When you were at your introductory press conference and you looked out in the front and you saw your colleagues, these other coaches, really so many great ones in so many different sports and, and this program has really built a department with loaded with great coaches. You know, how did you feel looking out on them and knowing now that you're a part of this? Well, I was so honored, Brandon, to, to see them. I know the summertime's a busy time in recruiting and camps and those things. And just to see them come to uh, support us in that press conference really meant a lot to me. And I've tried to make my way around since then to let them know how much I appreciated that. But I'm so thankful to be a part of this family. I think it's a very close knit family. You know, I co Coach Murphy texted me and said, you know, one win, we all, you know, one wins, we all win. And, and uh, that's the mentality that I take too. You'll see my family at every basketball, softball, volleyball, whatever it is, football, whatever it is, you'll see the golf family supporting uh, all the programs and uh, all the coaches. What atmosphere, this is a great facility you get here, Sewell Thomas, what atmosphere would you like to see on game days? And, and not even just the Friday night games, but what about those Sunday afternoon games? How do you want to see this place um, come spring? First of all, I want when, when teams start rolling in here with their buses, I want to see people lined up out here tailgating and, and letting those guys know they're fixing to have to deal with the Alabama Crimson Tide on Joe Sewell Field. That's the first thing. That's how the atmosphere I want it to be. They come in here, they drive in here, and they see the fans already here. And then secondly, when they get into this ballpark, they can feel the energy and the excitement uh, that our fans are going to bring to us. It's a huge home field advantage uh, that we have, and we have to create that atmosphere where it's fun and exciting, but you got to win. And uh, the expectation of fans, if they expect to win, they're going to come. And uh, we want this place to be a very passionate fan base uh, and not so friendly out there in the outfield. Pitching is your background, obviously a former pitching coach. Is, is that your philosophy with building the program? Obviously last year Alabama had a really strong pitching staff. Is that where it starts on the mound? It does, it does. You know, pitching and defense, I'll tell our team all the time, every day you got to be able to pitch and play defense. Offensively, it's going to come and go at different times. Uh, so you have to really put a lot of stock and emphasis on pitching and defense. You got to do it every day. And if we can do that and hold our opponents down to one or two, three runs a game, you got a chance to win. And in our offense, you know, we're just a kind of a creative offense. We want to take advantage of errors and hit by pitches and, you know, walks and those types of things. So, Brandon, you'll see us be real aggressive and, and uh, trying to put pressure on, on the other, other team's defense. You may have heard that it's been nearly two decades since Alabama did make it back to Omaha. You talked about Omaha. That was one of the core pieces of what you talked about on Friday. What does it take? to get a program to this place that so many programs now in the country really have legitimate shots at and, and are obviously fighting for. Right, I, I think the, the biggest thing, good Lord willing, you know, we gotta go out and find the right players. We gotta find guys that have great character, that have uh, great desire and passion to be the best. That's no, a number one, you know, with me as a coach. You know, if we can find those players, the system's gonna work, uh, the system, I think is going to be very productive. It's going to be something that's going to be fun to see. But we got to go out there and find the best players that have that dream and aspiration as we do as a coaching staff. And then we got to get after it. You know, we got to work hard. We got to get in the weight room. We got to get on the baseball field and, and develop. Uh, you see teams, I'm watching teams last night um, that are in the World Series. Uh, they're good programs, but there's nobody that's great. You know, there's nobody that's just, wow, man, look how many great players they have. That's a bunch of good players with some great players sprinkled in there, but they have a great coaching staff and a great system. And I think that's what we have to do here. We have to bring in great players with a great system, a great coaching staff, and a desire to be better than everybody else. You mentioned how you've been in contact with some of the current players on the team. What's the number one message you've passed along to them um, about what to expect over the next several months? Well, they, they, they need to expect as the head coach of this program, I'm going to demand perfection from them. I'm going to demand their very best every day from them. I'm going to be here every day. I don't miss practices. I don't miss, you know, things. I'm going to be here, and uh, I'm going to lead by an example. I'm going to be a very intense, very competitive, very passionate coach, and I want my players to follow that lead, and that's what it's going to take. And uh, I want those guys to know it's going to be a lot of hard work come uh, September uh, to prepare us for a great spring. And talking about the people you've surrounded yourself with, what are you looking for in your uh, supporting staff? Well, we, you know, we've talked to a few different people, but we haven't made a, a decision on anything here. And, uh, you know, we've even talked to the guys that are on the staff here. So, you know, if something doesn't work out with some guys that, that have already gotten some really good jobs, if it doesn't work out there, we may look internally. So it just depends on really what happens here over the next three or four days uh, with some different people. But eventually we won't. 
we want four assistant coach, you know, we want four guys that have the same drive and ambition as I do, and I think we'll be able to find that. You know, I mentioned the time it's been since Omaha, but there's been a lot of great players who have come. I mean, there's major leaguers, there's major league all-stars that have come through this program. Is it important for you to reach out to them to keep them still a part of this program? No doubt. That's, that, for me, is a high priority. I want our alumni to know who I am and then understand that uh, I respect what they have done. They were in those uniforms. They built this program. They got us to Omaha. And for me as a head coach, I want them to come back. I want them to, to tell our players their experiences. I want them to tell our players what it took to get there. And then for me as a head coach, my number one priority, besides the recruiting part of it, is to reach out to our alumni you know, and, and get them all on the same page and let them understand that, that we want to get back to Omaha and do those things. And we can't do that without their support and without their experiences. Makes sense that we have this here in the 525 Club then, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's talk about a pretty good alum. Yeah, big time, big time. And I'm gonna just take that and run with it. Thanks so much, Coach.